computing the inverse of a two-by-two matrix is easy. You have a direct formula for that. But you often encounter larger matrices. So what about those? Well, there are formulas in that case as well. They are, however, much more complicated than in the two-by-two two case. So we usually use another method to compute the inverse of larger matrices. In this video, you will learn how this method works. And you probably guessed already, the method is based on row reduction of an augmented matrix. But which one? Let us look at the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix. Keep it to 3x3 three three because 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, etc. goes exactly the same way, just more writing. So we know our A inverse will consist of three columns. Let's call them x1, x2, and x3. Now I know that A times A inverse is the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, or the matrix with columns E1, E2, and E3, because E1 equals 1, 0, 0, etc. So this is what I know, and now I want to find x1, x2, and x3 consecutively. When we multiply a times a inverse, we have a times a inverse, inverse over here, and we know how to multiply matrix times matrix. That yields a times x1 is first column of the product, a times x2 is the second column of the product, and a times x3 is the third column of the product. So there we are. Now this a times a inverse has to be equal to the matrix consisting of e1, e2, and e3. So this matrix on the left here has to be equal to the matrix on the right over here. But two matrices are only exactly equal if all columns are equal. So that means that a times x1 has to be e1, a times x2 has to be e2, and a times x3 has to be e3. But now we are back to a problem which we know how to solve. Because we have here a matrix equation of the form Ax equals b, where both a and b are known. In this case, the b equals 1, 0, 0, and the a is a known matrix. So we can find x1. Similar problem for x2, and similar problem for x3. We can do this slightly smarter, so let's do first a small intimate, so to see how the full algorithm works. So if we have a problem of form Ax1 equals E1, then we form the augmented matrix A and augment with E1. And let us do a slightly smaller 2 by 2 problem to show what's going to happen as an example. So we form, let's say, so A, and we form the augmented matrix with E1. And if we want to find the x1, we have to do row reduction. So let's see, minus 2 over here. So we get minus 2 plus 2 equals 0, minus 4 plus 5 equals 1, minus 2 plus 0 equals minus 2. And second step, minus 2 over here, second row stays the same, M uh, minus 2 uh, times 0 equals 0, add it to 1 equals 1, minus 2 times 1 equals minus 2, add it to 2 equals 0, and uh, minus 2 times minus 2 equals 4, added to 1, equals 5. So then we have our solution of the problem. First component 5 and the second minus 2. So the first component of x1 equals 5 and the second component equals minus 2. But what's essential is that you see that we got the I2 two matrix over here and our solution over here. So what have we done in fact? We started with A augmented with E1. We did some row reductions, and uh, finally we got the identity matrix on the left and x1, our solution, after the bar. So if we are going to solve this type of problems, we form the augmented matrix, A with E1, row reductions all the way, until we have the identity matrix uh, first and then bar, and then we have our solutions, x1, after the bar. So we start with a bar e1, 
row reduction, row reduction, row reduction, several steps, until we are here, we have R I3, and then we've got an R solution X1 after bar. Then, we do the same, but now A augmented with E2. Row reduction, row reduction, row reduction, until you have reduced your A to the identity matrix, and you've gotten your solution X2 after the bar. And then the third one, again A, but now augmented with E3 instead of E2. Same, again, row reductions, identity matrix, and then you got your X3. And then you have your X1, X2, and X3, which you can plug in to get your identity matrix. But wait a minute, can't we bit do this a bit smarter? You're doing row reductions, but you're always reducing the same matrix A. Only thing which is changing is the right hand side. So yes, something is changing, but only the right hand sides. So the reduction steps will always be the same because you always have the same A. So we can do this a bit smarter by doing all those row reductions at once at the same time. What we do is we form the augmented matrix A, but we augment it with the three right hand sides at the same time. We put E1, E2 and E3 next to each other after the bar. Then we do the row reductions. We get the I3 matrix in front of the bar and we reduce uh, the E1 will be become an X1, the E2 will become an X2, and the E3 will become an X3. And this way, our row reduction process is a bit more complicated. We have more rubbish on the right, but we have to do it only once instead of three times. Let's see what, ha what has happened. We started with A and the matrix E1, E2, E3 equals identity matrix. And after row reductions, we are at E3 and we got A inverse, because the matrix consisting of X1, X2, and X3 is exactly A inverse.